He ran the Clinton investigation. He runs the Russian investigation, and he hates the president. But your report says while his bias cast a cloud, it didn't impact final decisions. Is that accurate? Bias is all the way through this, and I'm sorry that you were not able to see that. In this country, we cannot live in a world where unelected people at the FBI get to shelter someone who I believe was actively working against the president. What is more textbook bias than prejudging this investigation before it's over and this one before it begins? New fallout tonight from today's heated hearing on the Hill. That was a small piece of it. Lawmakers grilled Inspector General Michael Horwitz on why FBI agent Peter Strzok's anti-Trump bias was not found to be an influence on the Clinton email investigation. And tonight, Strzok is responding, saying those lawmakers are actually the ones who are biased. A short time ago, his lawyer releasing a statement saying in part, quote, all of this seriously calls into question the impartiality of the disciplinary process, which now appears tainted by political influence instead of publicly calling for a long-serving FBI agent to be sum summarily fired, politicians should allow the disciplinary process to play out free from political pressure. Here now exclusively, Congressman Bob Goodlatte and Trey Gowdy, who chaired the two committees that questioned the IG Horowitz today. Thank you to both of you and for your time tonight. Uh, Congressman Gowdy, I'll start with you first. I know that that is the first you're hearing of Peter Strzok's attorney and that letter responding today. I hope he says that when he comes before Congress. Um, I, I hope that is his defense, that he's a victim. This is the same guy that said his fellow citizens, he could smell them if they were Trump supporters. This is the same guy that said the election should be 100 million to nothing. This is the same guy who slept walked through the Hillary Clinton investigation, but then woke up and got real excited at the prospect of ending the Trump campaign or ending the Trump presidency. I hope to goodness that he comes to Congress and next week, and that's his defense. Congressman Goodlad, uh, it's a pretty unbelievable statement uh, that says he is the target of unfounded personal attacks, political games, and inappropriate information leaks. There is absolutely no question that uh, all across uh, our uh, two committees, members on both sides of the aisle, uh, acknowledged how appalled they were uh, by the statements that he made. And uh, many acknowledged that making those statements using uh, government offices and government equipment uh, is highly inappropriate. And it clearly reflected upon the distinction between these two investigations uh, where his bias shows through clear and clear. But in any event, I agree with Trey. We want to have him before the committee. Uh, he has now indicated that he would come voluntarily, but he has not uh, pinned himself down on when. So we are imminently uh, going to issue a subpoena to him to appear next week. Okay. So the subpoena has been prepared. It has not been issued yet. It's, it's, it is ready to go. On the way. Okay. So should, we should expect to see Peter Strzok testify publicly next week. We're, we're still uh, open to working with him, but he needs to understand that he has to do it on our timetable, not on his. So if he's going to appear voluntarily, uh, his lawyer better contact us right away because the subpoena is coming. Well, I think you'll hear that message loud and clear. And uh, Chairman Gowdy, you talked a lot about the timeline of those text messages today. And then the big news that the IG is now confirming that they're looking into whether or not this FBI agent and his bias whether it impacted the launch of the Russia investigation. That is a big question. Did it? Well, it's, it, it, it's the seminal question. If you look at the chronology, of course, in late July of 2016 is when the Russia probe began. And you, you're not two weeks into it before Peter Strzok is saying, we'll stop it with the it being the presidency. We're not two weeks into it before he's talking about an insurance policy to make sure Donald Trump is never the president. So, so keep in mind, he, he's two weeks into an investigation, and he's already talking about impeaching the target of his investigation. They hadn't done anything at that point. I mean, two weeks, the paperwork's not even processed, but yet he's already reached his conclusion on what the outcome of that investigation is. Fast forward to when he's put on the Mueller probe and he's talking about how important this is and how momentous it is. And he's got to fix and finish what he started with the Hillary Clinton investigation. 
I have never in 20 years being a prosecutor seen a law enforcement agent with this amount of animus and bias towards a target, and I hope and pray he comes next week and portrays himself as a victim. I think a lot of people at this point, based on that setup, are going to want to see that as well. Uh, but Chairman Goodlatte, as far as now the IG confirming that they are looking into Peter Strzok, those text messages, his role in the launch of this Russia uh, probe, what more, after those hearings uh, wrapping up today, what more do you want to know? Well, there's a lot of things that the, the inspector general was not tasked with looking at. But uh, he also, let, let's just uh, note that that same Peter Strzok was deeply involved, the lead investigator in uh, the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Uh, and at the same time, he was making the statements that uh, Trey just referred to. He was also uh, helping uh, a process that bent over backwards to not follow proper investigative procedures with regard to former Secretary of State and then presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. That is a shocking contrast that should never be allowed again to occur in the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Uh, and so we have to continue to pursue that to make sure uh, that uh, the 2020 presidential election or any other future investigation is not tainted by this kind of bias and not tainted by the inappropriate procedures. Happy with the way things went today, Chairman? I thought it was a very good hearing, uh, and I think that uh, many people were today on both sides of the aisle acknowledging that the decision that was made uh, by President Trump uh, they don't, they don't, some of them didn't use his name, as recommended to by mm -hmm. Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein to fire James Comey was the correct decision. Uh, Chairman, good luck. And Gowdy, I know it was a really busy day for you, a busy day in Washington. And, and thanks for coming on the program tonight. We appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.